My name is Chris Impey. I'm a professor of astronomy at the University of Arizona. And I want to talk about astronomy for astronomical numbers, teaching astronomy through massive open online classes. What is a MOOC? It's a massive open online course or class. Massive tends to mean tens or hundreds of thousands, even millions. Open means that it's open for anyone and often free, without charge, as the MOOCs that I'm going to describe are. Online means that all the learning is done online and asynchronously, typically with videos, self-paced videos as the core of the content. Often this is not for college credit, is not done necessarily for grades, although completion certificates may be offered. The phenomenon of MOOCs is relatively recent, only 10 years old and it's been growing steadily for the last decade. Enrollment surged by a factor of eight in the MOOCs that I've been teaching during the pandemic, and it's not returned to pre-pandemic levels. So people who started to learn online for self-enrichment, lifelong learners, decided they liked that way of learning, and they've continued to use MOOCs as a way of learning about different fields, including science. Here's the surge in enrollment in the astronomy MOOC that we have with Coursera by a factor of 10, actually. And in terms of motivations of the learners, which we measure with a survey of the people as they start the course, professional motivations increased during the pandemic as people were trying to retrain and reskill for other jobs. Massive open online classes reach a large number of people. The MOOCs that I've been teaching and been involved with have reached over 400,000 people in 190 different countries. But the question is, how well served are these people in this mass form of education? The completion rates for MOOCs across the industry are typically low, 5 to 8 percent. So the question is, can you create a rich instructional environment for informal lifelong learners and induce more of them to finish the class? First of all, these are lifelong learners. This is not formal education. But if we think about it, most people, even if they're in a classroom or in college, or taking classes spend a small fraction of their time in a formal learning environment. Most science is encountered informally in science centers and planetaria and museums. MOOCs must also address diverse motivations of lifelong learners. We've measured these identities using an instrument first developed by John Falk, and the identities that dominate in a MOOC audience are those of explorers, facilitators, and experience seekers and also hobbyists, especially for astronomy because amateur astronomy is a big thing in the United States and worldwide. You choose your provider, and there are a number of them. These are commercial entities such as Udemy, Coursera, edX, and there's a whole ecosystem of providers of MOOCs. Some of them are also charging, mostly for professional development, business, law, and the professional schools, not typically for general science purposes. It's a highly international phenomena. This is a map of the enrollment with the dot indicating enrollment size in different countries. Most are in the United States, but you can see India runs a second and there's a very broad diversity of countries. The course is taught in English, but multilingual subtitles are possible and Google facilitates this. So this is a way to reach a very big international audience with astronomy content. The demographics of a MOOC are interesting because the age distribution is more or less flat. There are a fair number of retired people, middle-aged people, and even a certain number of teenagers or college-aged people, not taking it for credit, however. And in terms of the demographics of what jobs and skills and experience these people have, it's also very wide. Some are professional people, some are in jobs, some are unemployed, some are full-time students. Again, a very diverse audience. For an astronomy MOOC, there's a slight gender imbalance, about 55% men and 45% women, but not, a street, not an extreme imbalance. This course overview shows we have various components. The core, of course, is video lectures, uh, and they can be inserted with quizzes, and we also have discussion forums, we have live Q&A sessions, and we have citizen science projects to engage the learners. It's important to design videos that are chunked up in amounts that reach the attention span of people with busy lives who are taking this MOOC 
while doing other things. In our case, we use short videos, six to eight minutes in length, occasionally longer. We filmed using what I would call a semi-professional setup with a green screen, varying the backgrounds and the framing, and adding animations and inserting movie clips for visual variety. This is a way of keeping the attention of learners and chunking up the material into natural subtopics. Video lecturers and completion correlate, but with a very low correlation coefficient. So the people who watch more video lectures are more likely to complete, but it's not a tight correlation. Discussion forums are an important way to engage this kind of an audience. And as you see by the numbers, in a class with tens or hundreds of thousands of learners, you can have thousands of discussion threads, impossible for one instructor plus an assistant to keep up with. So we recruit mentors through Coursera. Mentors are people who took the class in the past and did well and liked it, and they can act as the instructor's eyes and ears, notifying the instructor of discussion threads that are blowing up with activity that they need to pay attention to, or in a worst case scenario, where people are being bad actors and occasionally have to get ejected from the platform. So mentors are a way for making discussion forums actually work with very large scale classes. We also, every couple of weeks, do live Q&A sessions. These get posted up onto YouTube and we have anywhere from 80 to even 200 people live online for asking questions about astronomy. An hour every couple of weeks you get through about 30 or 35 questions in an hour. And the questions come in either in advance by email or live people on the chat. Outreach of developing countries is important. And the data for our MOOC shows that the countries with the largest enrollment surges during the pandemic were on average poor and actually had worse access to the internet. That slightly counterintuitive result implies these learners are going online for advancement during the pandemic. And as I mentioned, these high enrollments and this type of motivation persists as the pandemic has eased. Here's the persistence curve in terms of progress through the material. There's a significant drop off of enrollment and attendance and participation, which drops even more severely with the first projects or quizzes, and then flattens off after a couple of weeks into a six or seven week course. And the final completion rate is quite low. National averages are very low. But we see here that predictors of completion go up. So if you can engage learners and get them to do citizen science projects or short writing assignments with peer review, you can get completion rates for that subset that are extremely high. We've supported this class with a website called Teach Astronomy, which has a free online textbook that I authored a number of years ago has 20,000 astronomical images and 2,100 short video clips on little topics in astronomy. The content is clustered uh, with a search engine that allows you to find all the different contents relating to a particular keyword. And we're delivering this to a mobile app soon. Here's an example of one of the textbook pages, one of the textbook articles. This is freely available content that is used by college students as well as by the MOOC audience. And the state of the art of this work is going to be an astronomy expert. So we've taken the Q&A sessions, of which we have 300 hours of video, amounting to thousands and thousands of questions over the last seven or eight years. And these have been chopped up and tagged and can be delivered based on a keyword search or on a voice search using a smart speaker. This is a technology that we're prototyping at the moment and could be a way for people that have their astronomy questions answered. Overall, and to sum up, MOOCs are a powerful way of reaching a large audience of informal learners across the world with cutting-edge astronomy content.